Dr. Keating's house. You wait here, Jeff. Yeah? You won't be long. Scott, my dear boy, I've been watching for you. Harry Adams, Dr. Keating. I brought him along to investigate this matter. Glad to know you. How do you do, Doc? Come in. Thank you. Drink? Please. Thanks, Doc. I came as soon as I received your wire. It was a shock. You don't seriously think there was anything irregular about Madame von Ottoman's death, do you, Doctor? I feel quite sure of it. The circumstances were too suspicious to be ignored. My sister died suddenly? Very. I met her only the day before, and she seemed well then. From what I can learn, the attack began with a feeling of drowsiness. 
In a few hours, she passed into a coma from which she never awakened. I made a determined effort to see her, but Dr. Von Altman refused me permission. So what could I do? He was her attending physician as well as her husband. Refused you? But you've known Lila all her life. The death certificate specifies a heart attack. But I know of no heart ailment indicated by those symptoms. They suggested something more sinister? They suggested poison. What can we do now? See to it that your sister is buried immediately. Well, let's go then. I'm getting kind of curious to meet this guy. Can you tell us if any of the servants are left there who might recognize me? No. Von Altman got rid of them all. But you've been away a good many years. I don't think anyone around here is likely to remember you except me. But why do you not? Since Von Altman doesn't know him, I intend to pass myself off as Scott Warrington while Scott pretends to be me. Then if any funny business starts, I can handle it. But you feel sure you can carry through such an imposture? For a while, anyway. Until we have time to make up our minds about this guy. We can go in my car. I only hope we're still in time. And then, and the curly hair, shoes and stockings are bouncing away. Oh, the rags, I'm in the groove, ain't I? <laughs> <laughs> Holy jumping Jupiter! Mr. Scott! Mr. Scott! What's the matter, Jack? Is you all right? Well, why shouldn't I be all right? On account of the faces, I saw peeking at me in them bushes. Face? What face? Right over there in them bushes. What's the matter with you, Jeff? There's no one in here. They're all right. They're right there. Mr. Beaselbuck, the devil himself. Mr. Larry, I'm going to get out of here. Now, take it easy, Jeff. He sure come a long way to find trouble. If you saw anyone, it was probably just one of the natives. Natives from where? Ordinary people don't go around with homos. Mr. Larry, I saw him sprouting out of their head. Ah, oh, don't be foolish, Jeff. What are you trying to do, scare us? With the competition I got around here, I can't scare nobody. Mr. Larry, I saw him looking at me just as plain as they, with red, big, red fire eyes, with wiggling horns, and lashing tail. Then what happened? Then they disappeared in the smoke, blue smoke, with red spots in it. Well, we can't waste any more time around here. Let's go over and see what Dr. Von Alderman has to say. Them the best words I heard tonight. Let's go. Yeah, 
by myself again? Yes, right here. Good evening, Nanny Bueller. This is Mr. Wellington. Please tell your master he is here. Mr. Wellington? Oh, the master's gonna be real pleased to see him. This way, gentlemen, if you please. The light done bumped out on us here in this hall. Dr. Keaton done wrong, Mr. Warrington. Oh, Mr. Warrington? Really? Uh, I'm Scott Warrington. Dr. Keating, you know, of course. This is my friend, Larry Adams. I'm Jennifer Rand, Dr. Von Alterman's secretary. You heard? Yes, Dr. Keating notified me. Dr. Von Alterman wanted to, but he didn't know how to reach you. It must have been a dreadful shock. It was to us. A great shock. You better find your master and tell him Madame Von Alterman's brother is here. I think he's in the chapel with her. <laughs> Come, Mr. I will come at once. See to the body of your mistress, quickly. Understand? I'll take care of her, like I always take care of her. Uh, Miss Wren, have you been with Von Altman long? About six months now. Then you must have seen a good deal of my uh, sister. Naturally, I live here in the house, you see. I understand the attack came on quite suddenly. She hadn't been ill and... No, even Dr. Von Alterman had no idea her heart was weak. She was so active always and she looked so well. Yes, so I understand. You know, it frightens one a little to realize how swiftly these things can happen. Mm hmm I should think it might. Tell me, you like Von Alterman and the work here? Very much indeed. He's been awfully patient with me and kind. You see, I'm not very competent, really. In fact, I had a hard time getting a place before I came here. And my sister, was he very kind to her, too? Kind? Why, well, he worshipped her. I've never seen... One of you, I understand, is Mr. Wellington. I'm sorry our meeting has to be under such circumstances. You, we should have met long before. You should have written your sister. But she never wrote. She was very bitter. But it would please her, I think, that you've come now. Oh, Dr. Keating, you know, of course. This is my friend, Larry Adams. I'm very happy to welcome you, Mr. Adams, even in this time of trouble. You remain for the funeral, of course. If you'll be good enough to have it soon. Tomorrow. Here in the South, it is not wise to waste time. Many things can happen. Jennifer, my dear, would you be kind enough to see that rooms are prepared for our guests? Certainly. You're very kind. If we won't be intruding, I have a servant with me, too. My driver. You're all very welcome, I'm sure. The storm must have made the roads impossible. May we see, Lila? Certainly. This way. Is you from New York? You see, I just come Master up. say drive car to garage. Gentlemen staying the night. Yeah? Here. Yeah? Here. 
Well, you see what I was going to say was... Beautiful car. I drove a car like this for master. Yes? When I was alive. Oh, when you was alive? Hmm? When you was alive? That did it. Wait. Waiting for me, honey? That's right. I'm to show you the way to the house. You've been this close to me all the time, and I've been wasting my time out front. Of course not. I just came to fetch you. What detained you, woman? <laughs> I never did think I could find anything that looked like you around this place. And you wouldn't, if I could get away. You don't like this place? And I don't like this place. What are we waiting for? My Aunt Mammy Bueller, she won't give me the money to go no. I'm getting out of here. If I have to walk, I hate this place. And I don't like what's going on here lately. What's going on here lately? You'll find out soon enough. What will I find out? You'll see with your own eyes. What will I see? Things walking. Ain't got no business walking. What thing? Now, wait a minute. I'll show you. Wait a minute, honey. I don't insist in seeing nothing. Wait a minute. Uh, is it much further? No. Hey, tonight I have much to give you the line titles, didn't it, honey? Hey, man, this is Miss Drygood. Here is cemetery. I thank you. But I got to go home. I forgot something. What you forget. I forgot to say that. Don't be afraid. Dead can't hurt you. No, but they'll make you hurt yourself. Where, where? What was that? Just a zombie. Just a zombie? Where am I? I don't know where you at, but 30 seconds from now, I'm going to be 11 miles away from here. Goodbye. I'm sure you'll excuse me, gentlemen. I should like to spend the last few moments with my wife. Lazarus will conduct you to your rooms. We can take turns if you like. Or all watch together. You really think it's necessary? I think it imperative that we see that no unholy rites are performed over Lila's body. Call her, Lazarus. But softly. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen, but I got to be with somebody that I know. What's the matter? Well, my head keeps telling my feet that there ain't no zombies, but my feet ain't convinced. Zombies? Yeah, you know, I know it ain't nothing like that when I'm with friends in the light, but when I'm in the dark, I trust nobody. You're a drunk. No, I ain't. I've been running. Ain't nothing that what I've seen come out of no box. Oh, who? trick of some kind. It must be. She's been drugged. I wish I could encourage you to think so, but I'm afraid my fears have been realized. You still think she's dead and he's able to make her walk? How ridiculous. Impossible. I'm sorry, Doc, but I'm afraid I feel the same way about it. Let's find Von Alderman, tell him what we've seen, and see how he works it out. Read what I dictated this afternoon, please. It is my hypothesis that metabolism, although vital to prenatal and adolescent development, is not essential in later life. Tissues and cells, once fully matured, can be sustained indefinitely by a process of inter-refrigeration. Yes? Yes, what is it? Sorry to disturb you, but something quite unbelievable has happened. Yes? The body of your wife is not in the casket. My dear fellow, you're talking absolute nonsense. Not at all. As a matter of fact, we just saw her leave it. You saw her leave it? Exactly. 
We all did. What's the meaning of it? Forgive me, but what you say is clearly impossible. on guard here since I left you? Yes, Master. I see cold. Have you a small mirror, Miss Van? Oh, yes. But look, she's smiling now. She wasn't before. How can you all behave like this? It's cruel. It's... it's unpardonable. You've had a long trip and are perhaps overtired. Our nerves sometimes play us strange tricks. Shall we go? Master say, follow me. Very good. Van Offerman, Commander von Hofmannsthal has received a report from me that my experiment is now successfully completed. Yes, Doctor. He sent me to inquire into the nature of it. Is he prepared to arrange my transportation home? Yes, I'm to arrange that. Will there be much apparatus? Naturally. And one subject to demonstrate my achievement. You shall see. Go to the chapel. Sound the call. Would you explain your experiment to me, Dr. Von Altman? Certainly. Please sit down. I've already tried to explain it, and they wouldn't believe me. I am prepared to supply my country with a new army, numbering as many thousands as are required. A new army? An army that will not need to be fed, that cannot be stopped by bullets, that is, in fact, invincible. Sounds impossible. An army of robots or automatons? An army of the living dead. What? Surely you heard me drilling them before you knocked at the door? I heard something. Wait. Come a few steps closer, my dear. Yeah. My wife does not answer your greeting because she's dead. Dead? Approach her and satisfy yourself. Give him your hand to kiss, my dear. You didn't believe me, did you? I'll prove it to you beyond a doubt. Forgive me, Herr Doctor, but I find it difficult to realize you've chosen your own wife for this dreadful experiment. I had already experimented with various subjects. Lazarus, who brought you in, was one of them. And what greater destiny could my wife have achieved than to serve me? And through me, our country. That is so. I shall take her there. And demonstrate the zombies must obey their master. Against an army of zombies, no armies could stand. Why, even blown half to bits, undaunted by fire and gas, zombies would fight on so long as the brain cells which receive and execute commands still remained intact. Oh. 
No. No. What's this? Your brain works then independently of mine. Go back. I must make still another experiment. Apparently I've succeeded too well this time. I must now paralyze certain portions of the brain so that my subjects can neither question nor reason, only hear and obey. Then at last we'll have an army perfect for our purpose. When will you be prepared to come then? I'll let you know. I shan't need more than a day or two. I have already a subject close at hand. When I've dealt with him, my discovery will be perfected. Lazarus will take you back where he found you. Lazarus? Ah, oh, yes. In the Bible. He rose from the dead. Off it is in. Off it is in. I had no opportunity last night to speak to you about your sister's estate. I can guess what you want to tell me. She left nothing to me. On the contrary, she left everything to you. To me? And I believe her fortune was rather large. No. She wished to have the world drawn in this way, and I offered no objection. After all, I'm a wealthy man. I don't believe it. It can't be true. You're just trying you to... You be rather concerned, Mr. Adams. Naturally, I'm concerned. I'm not Mr. Adams. I'm Scott Warrington. I suspected that from the first. You distrusted me from what you heard of me. Oh, I can understand. Would it be possible for us to see your wife's will? Surely, as a detective, you know that such a procedure would be unusual. However, I'll see if I can find it for you. Madam von Alterman's body's gone. for this outrage. What have you done with it? Tell me. I know nothing about it. For a long time, you've been attempting to interfere in my affairs. When my wife was ill, able to see no one, you created a scene here. You sent for Wellington and his friend, the detective. What do you think? What do you want? What do you expect to accomplish? Dr. Keating had nothing to do with this. We've all been together since we left this room last night. If you really don't know anything about the disappearance of the body, I suggest you notify the police. No. No, that would mean the most unpleasant publicity. I'll investigate this matter myself. If the body doesn't turn up, there can't be any funeral. Exactly. I'm afraid we've wasted our time in coming here. Unless you, Scott, insist on calling in the police. I will if we don't find out what's become of her. You must know something. You're always underfoot, listening and watching. You must have seen or heard something. I ain't seen nothing and I ain't heard nothing. Nothing. Less than nothing. You show you don't know where she is, Master. You show you can't guess. Well, now, would I be asking you if I knew? Well, you might, Master, if you wanted to pretend you didn't know. All I can tell you is that the doors and windows were barred on the inside. So no one on the outside could have gotten into this house during the night. Someone on the inside raised the bars, though, because when I came downstairs this morning, the front door was open a little. Lazarus, go out and search the grounds. Yes, Master. Kind of creepy. When the dead walks of its own will, no telling what they'll do next. Go out and gather me some swamp lilies. Bring them to my laboratory at once. Yes, Master. Oh, uh, what do he want with swamp lilies? I reckon he's got a use for them. You and Jeff better go fetch him some. Go oh, fetch him some? And when you go to pull the blooms, don't put your fingers to your mouth, for the juice from them lilies is rank poison. Oh, we'll go poison. Uh, Rosella, you go by yourself. See, one's company and two's a crowd. I'm gonna stay here with Mammy Bueller. And the worst of it is, you don't know when it gets you. You had no pain, you just get lifeless until you just dozes off. Hey, ain't that the way that Mr. Scott's sister died? No one died that way. What are you gonna do? Just stand around here and wait for something to turn up? Yep, no use running around in circles just to look busy. How about getting some air? It'll do us all good. All right. Anything is better than just standing around here. Coming? No, I think I'll just stick around here for the present. I see. Only remember, I didn't bring you along just for the ride. This here swamp's a mighty queer place. 
Lots of folks has died here. Sure enough. You got to take care of where you step so he isn't sucked in. I expect there's lots of bodies in this here swamp. You don't say it. Ain't I telling you? Strangers that wanders through here is gone so they can call for help. And the more they struggle, the quicker they sink. No. Ah! Help! Ah! Ah! Come now! Somebody come get me! Talk to me! Good gracious of me! What happened? Good gracious! Now look at that! Curious, no one has sent flowers or turned up to sympathize. Haven't they heard about Lila's death in the neighborhood around here? Yes, of course. News travels fast in a district like this where not very much happens. Well, then why haven't any other friends turned up? They hadn't any friends. Vaughn Alterman didn't encourage visitors, and Lila was never interested in the local gentry anyway. Do you mean to say they never saw anyone but each other and the servants? Oh, Lila used to go into New Orleans now and then on prolonged visits. Uh, it was a strange life for a girl as young as Lila. Was she happy, do you think? I don't know. What's that? It's hers, the one she was wearing. You might take it back to Vaughn Altman. I will look about here. We'll be agreed not to lose touch with one another while we're stuck in this place. I'll follow you back in ten minutes. I promise, absolutely. To my dearly beloved husband, Max Heinrich Walterman, I give and bequeath all my estate, both real and personal. <whistles> you know, I shouldn't have shown you this. It's a breach of confidence. So that's the will she signed. Her last will and testament. Are you absolutely certain? Oh, absolutely. I witnessed it before the notary who came with the attorney. Then Von Alterman lied to throw us off the scent. Lied? He told us the will was in Scott's favor. He must have known we'd find out the truth in a couple of days. And he's much too slick to get himself into a jam like that without a pretty good reason. Perhaps he was only testing Mr. Warrington. How's that? Perhaps he thought Mr. Warrington wasn't so grieved about his sister's death as anxious about her estate. It's more likely that he deliberately tried to bamboozle us just in case we were getting suspicious. You know, you're wrong about Dr. Von Alterman. You've misjudged him completely. Are you being loyal or dumb? Or are you just uh, covering up for him? You say you're a detective. Find out. What do you want, Max? Wow! The rope don't look. Don't look. Good. What do you mean there? A cough. Oh, mm. cough. I don't know whose it is, and they can't tell me, and I ain't gonna stay here long enough as. Let's go down to the house and tell the folks. It's hers, isn't it? Lilas. She was wearing it. All right. I'll inquire. Well, what's the matter with you now? I just saw a corpse down by the swamp. A corpse? You don't by any chance mean Madame Von Oliver's body? No, sir. A strange he corpse. A he -corp. Yes, sir, and he's been shot long, deep, wide, and consecutive. It is right here, Mr. Larry. Yes, sir. Well, it was here. Are you sure you saw it, Jeff? You're not just seeing things again, are you? I'm seeing things, but it's things that I don't want to see. Well, it's not here now. That's plain enough. Looking for something? Oh, yeah, a murdered corpse. Don't think a murderer would leave his victim here, do you? And the swamp close enough to conceal the evidence? No, it doesn't seem likely, does it? I reckon he came around the same way of thinking, too. What's the matter with him? Drive them on. Go after them. This line's dead. Perhaps the storm last night blew down the wires. Is anything wrong? Yes, Dr. Keating is missing. 
Missing? Since when? I left him out on the grounds over an hour ago, and he said he'd follow me right back in. He hasn't turned up. It's a little early to be concerned, isn't it? I don't think so. Have you found out what happened to Lilo's body? No, not yet. Well, I want the police notified without any more delay. Now, will you do it, or shall I? Well, I'll telephone at once, if you wish. Well, you can't do that, Dr. Von Altman. I'm sorry, the telephone isn't working. Something really should be done about those wires. I'll send a message to the sheriff. And tell him I'll give him half an hour to get here. Like Jeff's voice. The call. Another one? No, sir. The same one again. I recognize the lady on his arm. Come and come quick. Where is it? In your car. It and he was in no condition to drive. I want you to bring enough men to search this whole district and find my sister's body. I want you to locate Dr. Keating, too. I got you. Think you can handle it, Sheriff? You bet I can handle it. And don't overlook Dr. Von Alderman. I feel pretty sure he's at the bottom of this whole thing. Okay. How would you like to proceed? I'd better start by giving this Heine the once-over. I'll get him. Of course, you won't let Dr. Von Alderman know we suspect him. Don't worry about that. Just leave everything to me. You know the sheriff, of course. Yes, I think we've met. I believe we have. Perhaps you'd like to look over the house. I sure would, thoroughly. I want to see the room where she lived, the chapel where her body disappeared from, and also Dr. Keating's room. Come with me, I'll show you. You, of course, understand why I had to suggest this masquerade. They insisted that I send it to the police, and I had no alternative. It's a pleasure to serve you in any way here, Doctor. But I must congratulate you upon your excellent impersonation. We are taught to be efficient here, Doctor. Now we have to play their game. Aren't you going to keep an eye on him? Why, don't you trust him either? Sure. But I think you ought to keep an eye on him just the same. He seems to know his business. Maybe you can learn something. Thanks. Maybe I can. Tuesday. Calling SSX. BRG calling SSX. Come in, BRG. SSX receiving. Come in, BRG. U.S. agent investigating our activities is already on your trail. Better prepare to leave midnight tonight. Repeat for confirmation and answer. SSX repeating message from BRG. U.S. agent investigating our activities. He is already on your trail. 
Answer. We'll be ready. Have you any further instructions? Please state the arrangements are understood and agreed to. Seize and bind him. So you're in this too, Sheriff. But I'm not the Sheriff here, Ed. And that U.S. operative, I've already taken care of him. The vanishing court, eh? Search him. That is all, Master. Gag and find him. I didn't believe there could be zombies. I see now I was wrong. Wrong about you too, Air Professor. I'm afraid your information has come too late to do you much good, my friend. didn't really include you, but I can use you just as easily. And we've got well. I'm afraid you won't find it very comfortable in there, but I promise you, you will not suffer long. Go back. Go down cellar and fetch me up some strawberry preserves, Bill Zello. Jeff can go. Sure, where will I find him? When you get down there on the right. Not your left, mind you, but your right. Sure, I'll get him. I don't know no Jeff. Yeah, it's Mr. Adams. I'm locked in. But well, why didn't you say that? Thanks, boy. You're giving the nick of time. Who locked you in there, him? Oh, it was his brother, the professor. Come on, Charlie, back in the box. You sure don't find the strangest people to hang out with. Doc, what you gonna do with him? He belongs in there. You sure do. Mr. Larry, let's leave you. Every time you say something ain't gonna happen, something happens again. Just take it easy, Jeff. Be calm, like me. What's that? Mm -hmm. Put that down. Why, that's that stuff that Rosella got out of the swamps. It's poison. Poison. On Annie Bueller, preparing a good dinner for our guests? Nothing special. Oh, but I particularly wanted something special tonight. You know I don't want nobody messing around in my kitchen when I was cooking. I told you that the night your wife took sick. I remember, Annie Bueller. A coincidence, no? I'm always running into that fellow. Anyone else likely to come in here for a minute? The show is. Young Zeller's next door setting up the table. And Laz is down the cellar fetching up the wine. But I must talk to you, Mammy Bueller. Jeff tells me you know all about this swamp lily poison. Don't ask me, doesn't mister. You know, I've been studying you, Mammy Bueller. I don't think you're in this with Von Alderman at all. That I ain't. That man's in league with the devil. Well, then tell me. What do you think he's done with the body of his wife? What he done? <laughs> What's so funny about that? He ain't done nothing with her. That's what gets him so panicky. She just walked away. How do you mean, walked away? He done made her to walk. And she walked, but not where he meant for her to go. Always he tells them what to do. And the doesn't. But not Miss Lila. She goes her own way, living or dead. Where do you think she went? I 
I don't like her, no. But I reckon I could find her. Does you want to see her? I can't say as I really want to, but I think I should. Rosella, keep your eyes on things here till I get back. I reckon nothing won't go wrong. Unless it's already come, Miss Russia. brothers, Missy. You guard my brother until midnight. Then I'll be ready. Don't worry about him. What can we do for you? How can we help you? No one can help me so long as he lives. Only his death can release the zombie. You mean Von Alterman? Yes. I don't know what your plan is, but if it has anything to do with vengeance, we might act together. You join us, my dear. Thank you. Or perhaps you prefer a whiskey or sherry, anything you like. Thanks very much. Whatever you take will be quite all right with me. You know, I find this mixture, which I invented myself, to be an excellent stimulant for the digestion. Sheriff? Thanks, Doc. We shan't wait for your friend. Well, I can't imagine what's happened to him. It beats me the way they disappear one by one. To you, my dear brother-in-law, may your visit to me be a longer one than you intended. Thank you. A charming sentiment. May I join you? I'm sorry to be so late, but I got tied up and had a little trouble getting free. I hope you will feel that the effort was worthwhile. Oh, I shall, since you make it so plain that you value my society. Potent, isn't it? I hope so. Cocktails are supposed to be, aren't they? Not too potent. Or one might not enjoy one's dinner. Oh, you'll enjoy your dinner tonight. I promise you that. I saw to it personally. Master, dinner is served. Miss Randall, sit there. Yes, Master. No, please, not there. I find my wife's empty seat too distressing. Yes, I can understand that. Still, it's pretty soon to replace her, isn't it? Please. Certainly, if you wish. Mr. Scott, please. Mr. Adams. Sheriff? Sooner one adjusts one's self to the inevitable, the better, don't you think? I'm glad you feel that way. It might save trouble later. Trouble? What trouble, may I ask? I have a feeling there'll be further developments before midnight. Curious? I have the same feeling. Leave us. I'll ring the Irish coffee. What is it, my dear? If you'll excuse me, I think I'll try and get some rest. I had rather a disturbed night last night. I'm sorry. Of course. Good night. Good night. You must try this port. I'm sure you won't find anything like it anywhere in America. I bought it from Spain myself. very 
young at the time and naturally anxious not to make a fool of myself. I remember one day walking for hours in the Ludwigstrasse, trying to make up my mind. Wait a minute. I wouldn't feel groggy like this. Groggy? However, in the end, basing my conclusions on the experiments of Androsi in Vienna, I injected the serum into the body of a tramp. You've doped us. I'm afraid, my friend, this time you have indeed been caught napping. Lazarus! Carry this one to the laboratory and prepare him. He'll be better for my purpose. Keep an eye on the other one till the breathing stops. Yes, sir, doctor. I won't be long. Jeff, Rosella, let me deal with some coffee, please, at once. Not a cup, but a whole quart. And hurry up, we're to save a man's life. You can put the gun away, Adam. So he didn't catch you napping after all. Who are you, the United States agent? You've guessed it. It was the real foreign agent who was the vanishing corpse. I had a little trouble with him, and he got the worst of it. But everywhere I hid the body, Jeff found it. How did you know coffee was the antidote? He told me. How do you know? Mammy Bueller told me. Before I go after Scott, did you find any trace of Keating? No, I didn't. You think Von Altman did away with him? Perhaps. Dr. Von Altman. We're leaving here at midnight. But why should we leave here? I don't understand. My work will be completed by then. There'll be no further reason for delay. You'd better begin packing at once, but take only the barest necessities. Dr. Van Alderman. Peter here, doctor. Open, please, quickly. Van Alderman. But where are we going? Home, to my country. To Europe? In my country, I shall be exalted among the greatest men in history. Do you hear? In this glorious future, you shall have a part. You'll be the most envied woman in the new world. I don't know what to say. I didn't know or even guess any of this. I couldn't have stayed here if I had. You've grown up in the wrong environment, been taught to think the wrong thoughts. All that will be altered. But I don't want it altered. We can't waste any more time. We'll have to break the door down. Think you can find an axe? I'll try by the hard. There's nothing else that I'd rather have in my hand right now. We'll get going, then. Not me. I ain't gonna budge out of this spot. I might find something more than axe. Come on, we'll all go then. If there isn't an axe handy, we might find something else to do the job. No. No, I won't go. I have told you there's no other course open to you. You can't take me against my will. Not with Mr. Warrington and Mr. Adams to prevent it. I'll go to them and ask their help. Go to them. You'll find they're in no condition to help you or themselves. The servants will do as I bid them. This house is cut off from the outside world. You'll go with me, willingly or unwillingly. That's certain. It's up to you to make your choice. We leave within the hour. The door just opened and closed down, Doc. He just went down. He told me you... Never mind. He could only tell you what he knew. Come on. Let's go. We'll have to find Scott. The heart is still beating. Sure, I am enjoying this. Stand back, ladies. Ah! Oh, boy. I've been wanting to just for a long time. Where are they? 
Why don't they come? Back up against the wall and put up your hands. I've been after you a long time, Professor. So? Set your will against mine? I do. You can't hurt me. You can't destroy me. You can't control me. Seize and bind him. Miss Lala! Sorry you can't drive back with us. He's got to stay on a few days to settle things up here. I guess that's right. But Jennifer's in a hurry to go. Otherwise, we'd wait for you. You understand, don't you? Of course. And when I get you to Harlem, I'm going to get you a good job, a swell one. And if you just save your money, <laughs> mean you can get married. If I get the swell job, honey, uh -huh. I don't need to get married. Oh, come on, girl. 